On the question of EV, on the 17th of February, the cabinet decided that METI will be the lead ministry for EV. There are multiple questions that we will have to deal with. I will say the three main questions. Number one, adoption. What sort of model that we want to adopt EV as a nation? At the moment, the model is a linear model. The model is a very linear model uh, in the hope that by 2040, we'll have 38% uh, of uh, EV cars among the total number of cars. But I hope in the months to come, we can have more consultation so that we go on uh, an exponential growth model. 2023 may be the year that we will see massive changes in the EV sector around the globe. For a few reasons. One, lithium prices have come down. Therefore, battery prices have come down. Uh, and for the first time in many years, the Japanese car makers have finally abandoned hybrid. Because for many years, they were thinking that hybrid was the way to go, and therefore they were not pushing for EV. With the entry of Japanese car makers, uh, it adds to a lot more competition globally. So all this may add up to cheaper EV around the globe. And that may help us to rethink our model that, and that may hopefully help us to think through an exponential adoption of EV. The other possibility that, that will push this exponential adoption of EV is that Malaysia as a nation and as a government is grappling with a very high fuel subsidy problem. Fuel subsidy is about 10% of the national budget. And fuel subsidy is not good for climate and it's also poking a hole in the budget. How do we transition away from fuel subsidy? Of course, transition away from fuel subsidy is painful because we are so dependent on private car as the nation. Everyone depends on private car. Everyone depends on uh, a motorcycle. So moving away, it, many things has to be done, including say public transport, a lot more public transport, not just in the main city, but a lot of bus based public transport in the small town. But whether adoption of EV can be a transition, can be a way for people to try double transition, transition away from fuel subsidy into uh, new energy vehicle into EV. I hope that can also be explored by, by MITI and by the government and by the society. So the first question is adoption. The second part is charging the uh, charging station. Many people think the charging station is the number one challenge. When people ask me if it is a egg and chicken question, I always say it's a chicken question. You have chicken, you have egg. So I would prefer to deal with the first problem, that is adoption. If we have an exponential growth model for EV adoption, charging station will, be, will not become a problem because it becomes a business case. Um, businesses will see that everyone is using EV or half of the population is going to use EV in five years. And that is a business case. The bank, banks will know that there's a business case and you will have charging station. The third point is industrial development. This is not talked about much, but it's, it is very important for Malaysia. Why Malaysia is in a very unique position. We do have an automotive industry, but automotive industry is not as strong as those in Thailand because Thailand and Malaysia adopted a different automotive development uh, model. Malaysia was developing national car, where, whereas Thailand was mainly dependent on uh, foreign, foreign brands, particularly Japanese brands, to set up shops in Thailand and they develop a very strong automotive industry as well and much stronger than Malaysia's. But now we are in a new era. We are in a new era where EV is both a car and electric applicant. Malaysia has a very strong E&E &E industry. This is the time that Malaysia has both the automotive industry and the E&E &E industry. E &E industry. How do we as a government, how do we as BP, as well as the government, as well as the society, uh, push, push and promote and establish that linkages and establish Malaysia as a major parts and components uh, supplier for EV, not just for any Malaysian uh, supplier, but supply to the world EV industry. I think that is the other challenge that we will have to grapple with, we will have to deal with.